Hi friends, this session's outline is introduction to theories of learning. At the end of this session, you will be able to discuss the theories of learning. Psychologists have been having different views regarding how learning happens. People in the beginning were very curious to know how learning happens, what happens in our mind when we learn. But then all did not agree that mind is responsible for learning. Because of this, there were three differences of opinion. And therefore, we say that there are three schools of thought about theories of learning. They are behaviorist theories, cognitive or constructivist theories, and social constructivist theories. Hi friends, people have been really curious to know what happens when we learn, what changes happen within us when we learn. And there have been different opinions regarding what happens when we learn. Some people believed that mind is an empty slate as philosopher John Locke said and experience is written on it. So whatever is our experiences that is our learning according to behaviorists and whatever is learnt can also be observed in a learner's behavior. Another argument said that no, no, there is something which happens in our mind when we learn. The oldest theory is called the homunculus theory in which people thought there is a tiny person within our brain. When we are thinking that tiny person tells us about it and they again used to think who will tell that tiny person and they used to again argue to themselves there must be one more tinier person in that person's head and so on. From this theory came the idea that there is something here in the brain which makes us learn. Such theories, such people, psychologists who believed in this line of thought are said to be cognitivists and those theories are called cognitive theories of learning. Cognitive theories led to constructivist theories. When we have to exercise our mind, someone cannot be telling us what to do. Every individual will have to construct on its own knowledge. So with that, the cognitive theories emerged as constructivist theories. Again, over a period of time, when people were thinking about learning, they realized that at an individual level, whatever we can learn is limited. But when we interact with others, especially more knowledgeable others, more learning takes place. And this line of argument was given by social constructivists and the theories given by them are called social constructivist theories or the theories of social constructivism. Today in our session, we will know more about these theories. Now let us see what behaviorist theories have got to say. They argue that mind is not necessary for learning. Learning does not need thinking. It is just that when we experience a situation, we learn to react to it. The experience is the situation provided by the environment which we can call as stimulus. Any information which has been given by our sense organs, a sight, a sound, a taste, a touch or anything like that can be a stimulus. And we learn to respond to each stimulus in a particular manner. For example, when we hear a very thundering sound, we suddenly become alert. When a strong wind blows, we learn to close our eyes. 
So, such changes in the behavior are observable and these theories of learning which believe in observable changes in behavior and which explain learning as a connection between a stimulus and a response are called behaviorist theories of learning. In behaviorist theories, learning is gradual with more and more practice one gets a sense of the correct response, correct action and slowly with many trials after making many mistakes slowly right moves are identified, they are practiced and then they are perfected. Almost all the skills are learnt this way. Now, let us look at the example of even cycling or swimming or typing, driving, anything. Look at this example here of cycling. A person will not be able to start cycling with the very first attempt. There will be many moves which will be incorrect. There will be many, many trials which will be undertaken by the person and in the beginning there will be a lot of incorrect responses. Slowly with more and more practice, the correct responses will increase and the incorrect ones will reduce. We call this as stamping in of correct responses and stamping out of incorrect responses. In this way, gradually a person who wants to ride the cycle will have a feel for the right moves and practice the right ones and towards the end with more and more practice the skill becomes perfect. In this way any skill which is learnt needs a lot of trials and practice. Examples of these behaviorist theories are classical conditioning theory by Pavlov and Watson operant conditioning theory by Skinner. There is another school of thought which says that mind is responsible for learning, thinking which involves reasoning, analyzing etc. is necessary for learning. When we want to see meaning in any situation we try to look at the situation as a whole and try to find meaning in whatever we are saying. And in that process, there will be a sudden insight into the meaning of that situation. And this is called insight. Learning becomes meaningful only when we look at a situation as a whole understand the relationship between the different parts there. And when we are able to look at the whole situation, we find meaningful patterns that are familiar to us and that leads to a sudden awareness of the correct meaning that we call as insight. And this sudden insight which comes when we understand the whole situation is because of thinking. Learning by this method does not need practice because the mind has already reasoned, analyzed and suddenly that awareness, the insight which comes regarding that situation is retained for a longer time. So, the benefit of learning using mind is that the learning is sudden, it is not gradual as in case of behaviorist theories as mind has been involved in that. And once it is learned, it is not forgotten quickly and it is retained for a longer time. This is because the learning brings in permanent changes in our cognitive structure. By cognitive structure, I mean the apperceptive mass or the collection of general knowledge and events so to say in our brain, which we can call as apperceptive mass which consists of all the learned concept principles and other things in an organized pattern. If we learn more things, this apperceptive mass gets reorganized and this is how learning takes place. 
all the concepts, principles are learnt in this manner. In this way, we learn almost all the concepts, principles, whichever we find in particular situations. Examples of these cognitivist or constructivist theories are theory of cognitive development by Jean Piaget, discovery approach to learning by Brunner and meaningful verbal learning by Ossobel. The third school of thought is social constructivist theories which argues that learning does not happen at an individual level. Learning is between people, learning happens when we interact with others. So, to say interpersonal first and then intrapersonal within the person. That means, when we interact with people in groups, one who knows more about a particular thing we are discussing adds a lot of input into that situation because of which it results in better understanding and insight. When we learn in groups, there are always people who know more about a particular situation we are discussing and they add more value and more inputs to the discussion and that leads to better understanding and insight. Such mentoring by a more knowledgeable person always leads to a better learning. Therefore, teamwork, cooperative and collaborative learning lead to better learning than individual learning. Example of social constructivist theory is that by Vygotsky. Today, we have realized that there are three main schools of thought regarding explanation of learning. They are behaviorism, cognitivism or constructivism and social constructivism. Behaviors theories explain learning as a connection between a stimulus and a response and observable changes in behavior. Cognitivists explain learning as changes in the organization of our cognitive structure and the mind in the sense that thinking is responsible for learning, cognition is thinking. Thinking is responsible for learning and analyzing, reasoning, problem solving, these are all related to learning and cognitivists argue that this kind of learning once you understand the whole situation is sudden and that is an insight and once you learn you will not forget and it is retained for a longer time. But we cannot observe these changes in the behavior because whatever changes happen, happen in the organization of the cognitive structure which we call as a perceptive mass. Cognitivists also argue that learning is not a spectator sport. The learner has to interact with the learning situation and that will bring in some changes in his or her cognitive structure. That is why every learner constructs his or her own knowledge in the light of their previous experiences. So, we call that as constructivism. The third one, the social constructivism argues that whatever is learnt at an individual level has some limitations and learning can be enhanced by interaction with peers especially if they are more knowledgeable others. So, learning first happens at interpersonal level between people and then it happens at intrapersonal level within us. Therefore, instead of working at an individual level, learning in groups, doing teamwork and cooperative learning have better results. Thank you.